Choosing Home by Ginny Rules 27 Chapter 14 Claudine sighed as she made her way through the streets of the aisle. It had been months, and they hadn't seen hide or hair of Fred. If Claudine was being honest, though, she wasn't exactly complaining about that. Not after Cotillion. Henry had been sweet enough to get her set up over in Ursula's chip shop to watch it while he and the other rats went over to Lord Hades's, as he had gotten a television for the restaurant after Mal became King Ben's girlfriend. Granted, not every one of the rats went over to Lord Hades' restaurant, so Claudine had to use caution in order not to be discovered. She had to admit, she'd been a bit jealous of Mal as she watched the other girl dance with King Ben. Not because she had a longing to dance with royalty, but because Claudine couldn't help but wish for the day when she could be in Henry's arms and not have to worry about one of them getting a dagger to the side because of it. That jealousy had soon turned into fear as she saw Fred make his way down the steps of the ship and stroll towards Mal. Claudine did not blame the rats for their growls and dark remarks. She only wished she wasn't in their territory. Henry had made her off limits during face-offs, but a gang-wide jumping was another thing entirely. Who would have thought we'd ever see Captain Umar in a dress? Claudine heard Dustin ask. She didn't blame him for opting for the restaurant closer to his territory. The last time Dustin ventured outside the rat's territory, Fred had jumped him. I'm more impressed Harry hasn't fainted at the sight, another rat said, shaking his head. Well, Robert, judging by the way Jay had to catch him before he hit the deck... I'd say he's lost all feeling in his body. Very true. He didn't even glare at Gil when he walked past. And who was Gil walking with? Jade asked. I have no idea, but whoever she is, Harry would be ranting on, How did Fish for Brains get a girl like that? If he was contingent of it, Robert chuckled. All of the rats nodded, and they quieted down, as they watched Mal and King Ben dance. I'm happy for them, Claudine thought. I know it's a weird thing for an angel to think about for a rat, but Mal deserves this. She lived on the aisle just as much as the rest of us. She paid her dues. What the hell? Dustin yelled, breaking Claudine out of her thoughts. How is Freddy there? Jade snarled. Ryan's gonna be blaming himself, Robert said, shaking his head. It hasn't been that long since the stampede, after all. And Nick said that he and Derek have been taking Ryan back to the ship. Claudine bit her lip as she stared at the screen. Oh, God, she didn't want to be right. It was just a guess that Fred somehow made it over the bridge. But she honestly thought that if he had, he would have at least sent for the rest of the angels. Or at least her. He was her big brother, after all. What does that do? demon think he's doing? Another rat asked, glaring at the screen. Dunno, Caspian, but King of Ben doesn't look happy. Jade remarked, adding her own glare. This isn't going to end well. At least, hopefully not for Freddy. Kick his butt, ball! Or oh, King Ben will do the butt kicking? Caspian said as the on-screen Harry handed Ben a sword. Either works. Robert growled and the rats nodded in agreement. Claudine watched with growing trepidation as the fight ensued. King Ben's good, she couldn't help but think. Then again, I guess the king can't really be defenceless. Especially not a teenage king. Watch it, your highness. Freddy won't play fair, Dustin said, his voice low. He's surrounded, though. You really think Freddy will cheat? Robert asked. This is Freddy. You think he won't? Good point. Watch out! Jade shouted amid other cries from the other rats at the television, and Claudine whipped her attention back to the screen. That's a smoke bomb. Where in the world did Fred get a smoke bomb? Claudine thought as the screen went completely red with smoke. God damn it! Someone needs to clear that smoke! We can't see! It wasn't long before Mal's voice filled the restaurant from the TV, though it... it sounded... panicked? No, 
Claudine shook her head. Mal didn't get panicked. Beware, forswear, make the smoke disappear! Thank you, Captain, Dustin said with a nod of his head, though that quickly turned into a growl at the sight of the unconscious king. Claudine didn't think the rats would care so much about the king of Oridon. But then again, they were loyal to their captains. Maybe that was it. Oh, Freddy's dead. He's done it now. Jade growled. Kick his butt, Mal. Dustin nodded. Where'd she get a dagger? Caspian asked as Mal threw the dagger at Freddy. Probably from Fred himself, Claudine thought as she saw the black handle. All of Fred's daggers were always the ones with a black handle. Does it matter where Mal got the dagger? All that matters is that... Mal's a dragon. Claudine blinked and turned back to the screen. Sure enough, Robert had been right. Where Mal had stood, a dragon was now glaring at Fred before quickly taking flight. Oh, I think Fred is gonna regret escaping the aisle. Dustin grinned. You think? Jade said with a laugh. Thankfully, the cheers from the rats covered up the shocked scream from Claudine. She didn't mean to, but no matter what Fred had done, he was still her brother. There was still that fragment of sibling loyalty that clung for dear life, even after everything. She knew if Fred survived with that, it would be a miracle. Damn it, he's not dead! Robert exclaimed and Claudine turned her head so quickly one might have thought she had broken her neck. Sure enough, her brother was alive. Thank God! She'd get the chance to kill him herself! At least we'll get to see an interrogation, Caspian pointed out. That'll be good, even if Mal's grown too merciful. I see the captain may be in her dress, but she hasn't changed a bit. Dustin noted as Uma glared at the camera. I don't blame her. Would you want a camera in your face while interrogating Freddy? Robert asked. You know, I think Harry's wanted to do that for years. Jade said, her voice soft as Harry knocked Freddy out with his hook. You're telling us I want to do that, Robert stated. Claudine blocked them out as she watched Mal go to King Ben's side. Come on, your highness, wake up, she thought. Let one Isle girl have a happy moment after all of that. He is awake, Jade sighed. One less thing to worry about, Robert said with a grin. Wait, what's he doing? Dustin asked, is, is he? I think he is. Claudine thought as the on-screen Ben sank on one knee and pulled out a box. One day, that might be us, Henry. One day when we don't have to worry about Fred or gangs or anything. The room seemed to hold its breath as they waited for Mal's answer, only to explode in cheers upon the positive response. Claudine couldn't blame them. One of their own was going to be Queen of Oridon. Her blood ran cold as she realised what had just happened. Mal had almost killed Fred. And while that wasn't necessarily something the rats would cry over, the other angels would be out for blood. Specifically, a captain's blood. With Uma and Mal off the aisle, that just left Harriet. Or Henry. She slowly walked out of the restaurant, shaking her head and biting her lip to avoid crying. There was always a chance Fred wouldn't survive his wounds with injuries like those. As much as I want to go to Dragon Hall and be with Henry, I can't. She thought, I'm second in command of the Angels. I'm in charge. I need to make sure they don't end up killing themselves because a gang war against the rats would obliterate us. Claudine sighed and shook her head. It had been difficult to get the other Angels to see reason. Thankfully, Morgan was the only one with common sense, since Brooke was still in her safe house. Shayla and Lachlan were determined to kill a rat for revenge, and Strat almost threw a coup right then and there when she reminded him that she was in charge. After all, he wasn't the type to take orders from a woman. It had been a week after Cotillion that Claudine had even been able to sneak away and get over to Dragon's Hall, and to be held in Henry's arms. 
The only reason she had been able to had been because she pulled off Fred and reminded Strat just who he was dealing with. Claudine hated tapping into her Frollo side, but it made it so the angels listened to her in their bloodlust, which was the most important thing at the moment. With Fred having turned the angels into a joke by attacking Mal alone, he cost them any respect the Isle had given them. A commotion near the border of their territory, and the caster's territory, broke Claudine out of her thoughts as she raced to see what was going on. Zivon! What do you think you're doing? Ah, Claudine, so nice of you to join us. Zivon smirked. We thought we'd let you angels have your mourning period before taking what was ours. After all, you've been second ranked for far too long. Claudine looked to see Shayla, Morgan and Strat cornered by the casters. Well, Zivon and Maddie. Quinn was rarely in a confrontation, and Isola was their leader. You don't put the leader in harm's way. Get behind me, you guys! Claudine ordered as she moved to get in front of them. Strat scoffed and Claudine rolled her eyes. It wasn't the time for him to be judgmental of her. Strat, I swear, you better listen to me! Of course, Strat chose that moment to launch for Zevon, who just so happened to have a vial of something in his hand, because the next thing they knew, Strat was on the floor. Morgan, if you were ever to actually hit someone, now would be the time! Shayla, not the time! Back in formation! I don't have time for you to go rogue unless you want to end up on the ground like Strat! Morgan snapped just as Strat let out a scream of pain. It was definitely against his will, since every VK knew that you didn't show weakness like that. Especially not around enemies. What did Zevon hit him with? Shayla exclaimed as she looked over at Strat. Would you like to be the next one to find out, little angel? Zevon purred and Claudine held out her arm to keep Shayla back. You're out of your territory, Zevon. Henry's voice growled, causing Claudine's heart to jump and her blood to run cold, as the rats' face-off crew came out of the shadows. Zevon turned and smirked in amusement. Well, well, well. Who would have thought that the little old casters would merit the big bad rats to crawl out of their dark den? You know, Henry, I'm really surprised that you turned up. We're just getting rid of a little problem for you. We may have had our differences with the angels, but no one wants you lot getting too big for your breeches, Henry growled. I know you lot think the number two spot is up for grabs, but I don't care. You do it so close to our territory, it becomes our problem. Gods, could someone shut him up? Derek muttered as Strat screamed once more in pain. No one's even touching him. Oh, but that's the point, my good man. I must put this into the notes, that this brew works very well. Zevon said, an evil grin on his face. Stra! Stay in position! Claudine barked and had a dagger in her hand before anyone could blink. We didn't do anything to you, Zevon! It's not a matter of what you did, Claudine. It's the very fact that your gang exists right now that's the tiniest problem for us, Maddie said with a smirk. Oh, well, we are so sorry that we like existing, Maddie, Claudine said, rolling her eyes, the dagger still firmly in her hands. If you think you're getting our territory, you're dreaming. Now get out! The dagger flew from her hands to punctuate her point and lodged itself into Maggie's shoulder. Why, you little! Down! Henry yelled, lunging at Claudine before his brain could comprehend his actions as Zevon threw another vial. The glass shattered against his back and he grit his teeth as he felt Claudine gasp from underneath him. You okay? Henry whispered, opting to pretend his back didn't feel like it was on fire at that very moment. Claudine nodded quickly, but Henry could see the worry hidden in her eyes. Henry! Claudine! Morgan shouted at the same time as Derek, much to everyone's shock. 
fired off a dagger that lodged itself into Zevon's shoulder. Rush him! Now! Derek barked at the team, taking only a split second to go over a shock as Zevon staggered back. Oh, no you don't! Maddie said, creating a smoke cloud from a vial to try to obstruct the rat's vision. You really think we'd be thrown off by smoke? Derek growled. Dustin, Nick, grab her. Jake, Bonnie, you two handle Zebon. Derek! Do it! Derek barked before eyeing Henry in worry. Um, good, mate. Henry told him, gritting his teeth as he got up. He had to remember the situation, and as much as he wanted to help Claudie up, he let Morgan yank her up instead. Derek rushed over and helped Henry get to his feet. The teams he had mentioned making short work of the casters. You didn't get hit with what Strat did, did you? Derek murmured, keeping Henry steady. It wouldn't do to show weakness in front of two rival gangs, after all. I don't think so, considering I can stand, and I'm not on the ground screaming my head off. Henry said, his jaw clenched in pain. Derek nodded. Is it weird that I'm a little worried about him? He muttered as Strat let out another gut-wrenching scream. Maybe a little. Henry said, How long does the stuff you use last? Claudine barked at Zevon, her eyes flickering between Strat and Henry. That's for us to know and for you to find out, little angel. Zevon smirked even with the dagger sticking out of his shoulder. You really want to find out how little I am? Claudine growled. Claudine, don't, Morgan said, much to everyone's surprise. Strat needs us right now. Zevon's nothing considering he managed to get hit with my dagger. Really, Zevon? That's pathetic. Morgan's the worst shot in the gang. And her first real hit is you? Shayla taunted, though genuine shock could be heard in her tone. We can celebrate when we're back at the Haven, Claudine said, looking at Shayla. Can you get Strat up off the ground so we can get back? Morgan, give her a hand if she needs it. What do you want done with these two? Derek asked, looking at Zevon and Maddie. Get them out of here, Claudine sighed. I'd say stab him, but if we need a cure for Strat... Understood. And I'd like to say we get our daggers back, but the odds of that... Oh, we'll take care of that. Nick smirked as he and Jake yanked the daggers out of Zevon and Maddie's shoulders. Normally we wouldn't give you lot bag weapons, but we don't want the casters to have any more weapons at their disposal. Jake explained, vials are bad enough. Agreed. Claudine muttered as Shayla and Morgan got strapped to his feet. Let me at him! I'll crush that little bug to dust! Z Strat muttered, gritting his teeth against another scream. You can crush him when you're back on your feet. Claudine ordered, get him out of here, you two. Henry sighed as the three angels walked off, leaving only Claudine. Well, if he's talking, it might wear off. He muttered, ignoring the throbbing of his own back. It honestly felt as if it was one bruise, but it had been worth it. Better him than Claudine. Get them out of there! Yes, Henry! The help was... appreciated, Claudine said, giving Henry the best thank you she could in front of an audience. She knew, though, she'd thank him properly when they were alone. Enemy of my enemy, right? Henry told her, giving her the best. I couldn't have let you get hurt. He could with the others here. Agreed, Claudine nodded the tiniest smile on her lips. Come on, Henry, let's get you checked out. Derek stated, we need you at 100%. Right, Henry nodded, and held back a wince as Derek put a slight amount of pressure on his back. Claudine bit her lip as she watched them walk off. Be careful, she thought as she turned to follow her gang. Hopefully they would use this as an example as to why they did not go into gang wars. Then again, that would consider most of her gang having a beret and outside of bloodlust for the rats. Claudine had never been more thankful for the casters as she was in that moment. Shayla, Lachlan and Strat's eye would be on Zevon instead of Henry. Now all she had to do was keep the idiots alive until Fred came back. 
God, Fred better appreciate everything she did for the gang. End of chapter. Hi, guys. Hope you enjoyed that one. Oh, my Lord. Whew. Okay. Well, Claudine's loyalty is... It's one of her good traits. I like it. Even Freddy doesn't deserve that kind of loyalty. It's nice that his sister's got his back. Even if it's the barest minimum now, honestly. There are some people you just need to cut out of your life, I believe. And, oh my god, Henry taking that vial for her. I mean, what did Zevon throw at him? Acid? Ouch. And not to mention, I do kind of feel bad for Strat. I mean, the dude's an asshole, but no one deserves that kind of pain. I don't believe. Well, except maybe Freddy and Audrey, but then again, that I might be biased. Anyway, you guys know the drill. Like, comment, and subscribe, and hit that bell to get notified for whenever I upload a new video. Have a good day, night, or whatever time zone you're in. Bye, my guys, gals, and non-binary pals. I'll see you in another video. Take care.